The curveball has long been the first breaking ball taught for any amateur baseball player. Whether you want to call it the old Uncle Charlie, the Big 12-6, or a slurve, this video is going to detail the basics of how to throw the pitch. What's up guys? My name is Chris Langan and I'm a pitching coordinator here at Driveline Baseball. Before getting into how to throw a curveball, if you haven't yet, you should check out our basics of spin and movement video along with our curveball variance video to get you up to date on the relative context that will be involved in this video. If you've watched our video on how to throw a slider, you know that we'll start with the grip intricacies. What we touched on in that video basically stays the same here, but for this, we're gonna focus on the main grip intricacies we see just with curveballs. Once again, thumb positioning is a major factor we've seen lead to different profiles here at Driveline that doesn't have to do with the cue or the base grip. We track whether or not the thumb is tucked like this or flat and have three coordinates to define basically where the thumb is relative to the index and middle fingers. For curveballs, we typically see two thumb positions. Zero, which means the thumb is essentially directly underneath the ball, and 25, in which the thumb is basically halfway between underneath the ball and on the complete side of the ball, which we would tag as 50. Just like the slider video, we've also got spike modifications, which are far more prevalent for most pitchers when they go to their curveball. Making a spike modification can help with pre-setting pressure into the middle finger and can play a role in changing the spin direction of the pitch downward. The usage of the spike is commonly to leverage the front of the ball, but can also be for comfort for sliders. Again, it's just far more common to see it in the curveball due to the two pitches, that being the slider and the curveballs, deferring roles in most pitchers' arsenals. Popular spike modifications we see at driveline, we have the standard spike, like this, the index off, which looks like this, basically all just middle finger pressure there. And then we also have the knuckle spike, which looks something like this. These are just the most common. We'll also see a stacked. We'll see a lot of variance in basically the amount of pressure applied to that index finger or to the middle finger, but those are kind of the three primary spikes we're gonna see with that curveball. Finally, we'll define depth, or how much room there is between the palm and the baseball. We define this subjectively through three categories. First, as shown on your screen, is standard depth. The next tag we'll make is quote unquote deep depth. This is when the ball is essentially pinned into the palm with no space in between. Finally, we've got shallow depth. Typically more common with change-ups where the ball is essentially more out in the fingertips. The biggest giveaway here is that there's a decent sized opening between the baseball and the palm. Next up, we've got our base grips. With the curveball, it's actually relatively simple. There's two that make up over 90% of our in-gym athletes when they throw a classified curveball. Here's what curveball one, or the around curveball, looks like. The pitcher will simply climb up towards the horseshoe seam, stacking their index and middle fingers against the arm side seam in the process. Curveball two, or the horseshoe curveball, is where the pitcher will face the horseshoe towards them and will creep up on the arm side seam. Generally, the index finger will be on the smooth surface of the ball on the logo. This grip is exactly the same as the SL3 grip we discussed in our slider video, but the thought process at release typically differentiates drastically to get that deferring movement profile. Oftentimes, you'll get to a point where the athlete will signify, hey, this grip feels comfortable, I feel confident with the pitch, but when you look at the radar tech, or if, you're just, if you don't have that and you're just visually watching the pitch, it may not get that bend or snap you want out of your curveball. When this occurs, you need to add in a layer of cueing. This is where the coach will say things such as, hey, try to throw the back of your hand, try to throw a slurve, try to throw it more like a slider, things of that nature. Here's an example of an athlete going from a sweeper profile to more of an efficient slurve type profile, generating more depth than the league average curveball in the process. The grip, which is CB2 or the horseshoe curveball we just discussed, stays the same throughout. Here's a list of cues that may be helpful in your pursuit of either teaching or throwing a curveball yourself. As we've already touched on, the pitch is a little more contextual to the athlete's arsenal than a fastball or a slider. Some pitchers will utilize their curveball as primarily a whiff generator, whereas others will use it as a take or a freeze pitch. Knowing what role the pitch projects to play in the arsenal is an absolute necessity before you start cueing it and putting it in certain movement brackets. In addition, the cues listed here are just general trends of what we see happen to the resultant pitch profile when it is deployed. For pitchers that are throwing more downer type of breaking balls, thinking sideways curveball may actually increase velocity. Thus, the cues plus general change in the pitch shape must be contextualized to what the previous profile of the pitch looked like. If you've never thrown a curveball before, you're probably going to want to start with simply spinning the pitch 
during catch play. Among the biggest faults I see with curveballs, especially when the pitchers learn them at a young age, is they try to rely too much on gravity to do the work. An effective curveball is typically going to have a high amount of spin-induced movement. You're not going to slow down your mechanics or your body to create that depth to the pitch, but you're actually going to incorporate topspin to generate that. If you keep the velocity or throw it, say, at slider velocity, that's even better. Pitch speed is just a major factor in breaking ball performance, and as they say, velocity is king. Getting the grip is obviously the first step here. The biggest thing is you want to make sure you've actually got the fingers, specifically the middle finger, on a seam so you can actually leverage that to spin the baseball. Oftentimes we'll see pitchers who simply grip it like this, or they kind of get close to the seam, but they don't actually leverage it at release and maximize the magnus force that they can create on the pitch. Following that, I'm going to touch on what I've already discussed earlier. When you are looking to throw a curveball, you need to know what the purpose of the pitch is going to be in the arsenal. For instance, if you were coming to a conclusion, hey, I want to throw an efficient downer or a true 12-6 curveball, and you throw from a low three-quarter slot, your only ability to create that is going to be through just hijacking your arm slot and basically forcing an absurd amount of cueing to obtain that profile. And at the end of the day, it probably isn't going to be firm enough for it to be an effective pitch in your arsenal. So the biggest thing you have to do is know what type of curveball you want to throw, and then you need to logically conclude whether or not that's going to be possible. One of the best things you can do when learning to throw a curveball is make sure you're learning to throw the right one. Some pitchers are going to be able to learn, lean into more of a slurve, typically if they're three quarters and especially lower, whereas others, they're probably going to be better off if they're higher up, throwing more of a downer profile and mixing that with something that's a little bit more gyroscopic on their slider. So again, check out our curveball variance video to maybe help you better conclude, hey, this type of curveball is the one that's going to work for me in my arsenal because of my arm angle and some other variables at play that we won't get into in this specific video. So if you're using it off a slider or as a take pitch, just know what amount of depth you're looking for and set that as your target. So again, start with getting a comfortable grip, progress to a constraint drill of some sort, basically take some of the complexity if you're first learning the pitch out of the entire throw, and then progress to the mound. I would basically start off with the grip, kind of configure what depth is going to feel good, whether or not you want to spike on there, etc. And then kind of just think, throw the back of your hand to the catcher to try to get some of that top spin. Once you see that tracking tech, register the pitch and you've already pre-planned, hey, here's what I want the pitch to look like. Here's the purpose in the arsenal. You can then progress to those slides we showed earlier and cue accordingly to where you want that pitch to end up. If it's a slurve, think more back of the hand. If it's a pretty slow downer and you're trying to get more velo, you might cue a sideways curveball or you might just simply cue a slurve or added velocity. At driveline, we utilize the blob, which provides us with stuff plus values based upon the vertical break, horizontal break, and the velocity of the pitch. This allows us to know which direction to go with the pitcher's curveball, which often isn't intuitive to know. Say whether or not we want to make it big and loopy, kind of like Adam Wainwright's, or if we want it to be a little bit more gyroscopic, be a little bit more tighter, say like Josiah Gray's. That relationship is always going to depend on each pitcher and what their strengths and weaknesses are along with the rest of their arsenal. We'll link our recent blog about Stuff Plus below so you continue to read more on the topic. And that's the basics of throwing a curveball. Appreciate everyone for following along today. We'll be back with more pitch type breakdowns soon. If you have any questions or comments below, please leave them and we'll be sure to provide feedback or communicate with you and continue that discussion. Again, this video was directed towards a range of an audience and it's kind of just a generalist theme for how to begin to throw a curveball. We're very happy to get into more complex questions and are excited to see where that conversation will go. Appreciate you guys again for following along and be sure to subscribe if you liked it.